Hello and welcome to another episode of Change of Raymond. I'm so excited to be here. We do apologize for our tardiness, but once you see what we have in store for you this evening, you will attest that it was well worth the wait. So as promised, we did tell you last week that we have a very special presentation for you tonight. And here we are. We have a special guest with us, my friend, my sister in Christ, Keisha. She will be sharing her testimony with us. She will be sharing her experience with us as we consider, can God today find a virtuous woman? We will also be looking at sewing and dressing to the glory of God. And mm -hmm. so we will hear from her briefly, but we want to set the stage right now by asking you the question. And I'll also ask you the question, okay. Keisha. Have you heard the term of a high value man or a high value woman? Absolutely. Yes, it's everywhere. There's podcasts about it. There's articles about what constitutes a high value woman, right? A high value man. How can I become a high value woman? And society looks at these high value women as independent women, right? A lot yes. of them say to be a high value woman, you have to, you don't necessarily need a husband. You don't That's need a right. man. You can do anything that a man can do and even better. Yes. That's what society deems as a high value mm -hmm. woman, right? What else have you noticed about these so-called high valued women? Um, as you said, um, they tend to be women that shun the normal or traditional societal roles. Um, uh, extremely independent. Right. Um, also tend to be feminists um, or fall or claim themselves to be feminists or fall under that category and what all that that entails. Right. And that does entail a lot because they tend to deviate away from what right. a woman's role is biblically, right? Yes. And even traditionally in society. But do you know that the Bible actually speaks of the highest value of a woman, a high value woman? Absolutely. And what woman are we talking about here? We are talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. That's right, the virtuous woman. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 31 verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? So it lets us know that these virtuous women are hard to find, Yes. you know, and especially nowadays, who can find, can God find us as virtual, virtuous women? And when we look at what the Bible defines as a virtuous woman, he says her price is far above rubies. So yeah. her price can't even be estimated, right? Yeah, that's amazing. But if you look at her characteristics, it's the polar opposite of everything that society says is a high value woman. Yes. This Proverbs 31 woman is a woman who is meek, is quiet. She's submissive to her husband. She uh, fits the biblical role of what women were called to do, what God has called us as women to do. Yes. She takes care of her household, yes. right? She provides for her family, food and clothing. She yes. also ministers, she's a, an evangelist, right? Yes. She reaches out to those that are in need. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the Bible calls a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. And you know, Keisha, what I found very interesting about Proverbs 31 is that there are six verses in Proverbs 31 that are actually devoted to this virtuous woman mm -hmm. working willingly with her hands yes. with a needle and thread. Yes. It says that she puts her hand to the, the spindle, mm -hmm. right? And the distaff and she seeks wool and flax yes. and it, it, six whole verses. And if you want the references, verse 13, 19, 21, 22 and verse 24 talks about how this virtuous woman she knows how to sew. Yes. And so that's a quality nowadays. And you would agree that a lot of us women, unfortunately, don't have. It right. seems to be like a lost art. Yes. But we are so thankful today <laughs> that you, as a young person, which is extremely rare to find, mm -hmm. you actually make clothes. You actually know how to make your own clothes and clothes for others. Mm -hmm. And you're going to talk about that tonight with us, right? I, I will, Sister Hillary. And thank you so much for... Um, inviting me here. Yes. I'm deeply excited and blessed to be here. And I pray that um, by the movement of the Holy Spirit, that what I have to share with you all this evening will be a blessing to you, but also an encouragement um, to the women out there who are on their journey of trying to um, fill those shoes of becoming a virtuous woman who want to be found as a virtuous woman um, when Jesus returns. Amen. All right. So with that, we're going to ask you to just so our viewers can get familiar with with you. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um, so as Sister Hillary um, already mentioned, my name is Kachel, Kachel Johnson, and I'm a native of Atlanta, Georgia. 
Um, I have, it's very interesting um, how God works, but in Sabbath school, if you all have attended, we talked about the different denominations. And I was actually raised um, United Methodist. And so um, I've spent most of, well, all of my childhood and most of my um, early adulthood as a Methodist. Um, and I had no idea about Adventist or Adventism. And um, it was very interesting how God brought me into this movement, but I'm so blessed that he um, allowed me to hear the truth um, and that it was actually what I needed at the time and was searching um, for some answers that my denomination wasn't able to provide. Well, praise God for his leading. And we're so thankful that you actually uh, answered God's call and mm -hmm. that you studied for yourself and that the Lord has brought you this thus far on your journey here. Amen. And so I would like to ask you some questions. Of course, we are talking about change of raiment. So I would like you to share your experience with dress reform. Mm -hmm. um, how did you uh, come to the knowledge of dress reform and how has that journey been for you? Some of the ups and downs, the blessings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so as I've previously stated, uh, dress reform was not part of my upbringing. It, um, the United Methodists don't practice dress reform. Um, but I feel that when I look back on specifically the past uh, three years, um, because I came into Adventism or was introduced to it in 2020 at the height of the pandemic, um, I can see how God was preparing me to receive the message. And he was already um, working on my heart. I was actually in a job and we had a uniform, um, but I started to feel convicted about the uniform. We had skirts and shirts, but the shirts were buttoned or unbuttoned very low and you couldn't button, button them up. They had no buttons. Um, and so I changed my shirt and got a shirt that buttoned up and I let the hem out of my skirt. Okay. It was still, it wasn't, you know, compliant <laughs> at that time, but it was lower than what it was. And so um, I remember that I had uh, an issue with management because someone saw me and they um, came to me and said, why do you have that shirt on and not the company issued shirt? And I began to tell them that, you know, I feel convicted, I want to be modest and what we're doing with all of the activity, bending over in front of people that I just didn't feel comfortable. Um, and they proceeded to make me write a letter and they told me that I needed to have a pastor sign off that I needed to be covered. Wow. And I thought this was very interesting. Um, and it also piqued my interest that there's all of these other women who worked in the same field and their sh skirts were shorter wow. and they weren't getting called out or they unbuttoned um, their shirts lower and they weren't in this same situation. Um, and so, um, I didn't have a pastor or anyone that could mm -hmm. sign off on that. So I wrote a letter and I presented my Bible verses as to what a woman is and how we should dress. And um, I told them that as a believer that um, I should be led by my own conscience and I don't need another man to sign off and say that what I'm doing is right if right. I'm being convicted of God to do this. Um, and they accepted it. Praise the Lord. That's and, wonderful. And so um, that um, was kind of one of the big things that happened. Um, and this was right before, because this was the career that I had right before um, March 2020 okay. when the pandemic hit. And so I switched careers. And in July is when I learned of Adventism. Wow. And this so God was preparing you. He though. was he was yeah. preparing me. Um, and looking back, I see it. I didn't understand kind of all the things that he was saying and what I was being convicted of. But um, I realized that he was indeed preparing me to hear this message. Um, and you know what? That's a good problem to have with management when yeah. the only thing that they can um, <laughs> complain about Absolutely. is that you're <laughs> being modest. You right. know, so it, it's a blessing it and it, it's a witness to them even. And it's a blessing that they accepted your letter. But what a witness to all the other workers, the women that were dressing those ways. Who right. knows that some of them probably could have felt the same way, but they were too 
timid maybe to say right. anything, but when they saw you take a stand, it could have inspired them. And that's, that's the beauty of God also. He works with us where we are. Yes. You know, and step by, he takes us along step by step. Yes. And then when he reveals further truths to us, then... Yes. When we're ready to receive them, yes. he brings that to us. But praise God that you were obedient. Amen. Yes. Um, it was it was hard um, because you don't feel like you have someone to stand with you. Right. You feel like you're standing alone. But I believe that that, too, is a preparation oh, because yes. of what we know we're going to face in the end. And there are going to be times where we're going to have to stand alone. Oh, yeah. um, despite what the world says or despite um, what friends or family says or your job or your job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You may have to, you know, <laughs> let go of certain things. Like Absolutely. you said, friends, jobs, yes. et cetera. And I'm sure that as you mentioned the pandemic, I'm sure that this test prepared you when they, you know, tried to push the, yes. <laughs> the all the policies with the the Abs vaccines and all of that. Absolutely. Kind of because I yeah. had to write another letter from my new you job <laughs> about that. Um, yeah. So I had, I had practice <laughs> Amen. and I was Amen. ready to um, take that stand um, for with the knowledge that I had received, because by God's grace, I had just received um, all of the truths concerning right. and around the pandemic and the pestilence. And um, it was it was eye opening, but it's also like, wait a minute, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. And why are so many and being from science, uh, having a science and research background, it's like, why are so many falling right. into this trap and, and the lies that are being told? But um, absolutely, God sets it up for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And as you mentioned that, that that's one thing that I admire about new believers, because you're really a babe <laughs> when you think about it in your walk. Yes. But the fact that you can receive the truths, you know, and just so and, and run with them, as it were. Yes. And you're just so zealous and on fire for the Lord. And then, unfortunately, uh, you have people that maybe were brought up as Seventh-day Adventists. You know, some of the very things that you're taking a stand on, the modesty, you know, the health reform mm -hmm. with the, you know, vaccine and all mm -hmm. that stuff and resisting that. And you have some of us that are seasoned, mm -hmm. that are finding it difficult yes. to comply with, with God's word. And so it's really inspiring, especially, like I said before, to see a young person that is um, so excited about the truth. And when the truth comes, you don't question it. You're just, you know, living for God and standing Absolutely. courageously and boldly doing it. Absolutely. So we could go on and on, yeah. but we have to get to the sewing part. I know our viewers are here to hear about your experience okay. with sewing and to also get some inspiration on how they, too, can perhaps start a journey and learn how to sew to God's glory, Absolutely. dress and sewing for God's glory. So how did you learn to sew uh, and w at what age? Um, so actually my mom sews. Okay. And my mom started sewing when she was um, like very young. She made doll clothes. Oh, nice. And so I didn't start quite that young. And actually I had a conversation with her um, and asked her, what was our first piece that we made together? Um, but she couldn't quite remember, but I remember, um, what I think is the first actual apparel that I made for myself was a pair of pants, um, in middle school. Wow. So, um, I was in band and I needed a pair of white pants and we couldn't find any for me. And so I said, mom, why don't I just make some? And she helped me and those were my pants for performance. <laughs> wow. That year. That's really something, especially as a young person, because I know my mom, she's into quilting and she, as a young person, she's made, you know, small clothing, you know, mm -hmm. skirts and mm -hmm. things like that. And she always tried to get my sister and myself into sewing. She's really into quilting now, mm -hmm. but um, we had other important <laughs> things to do at the time. We just, you know, we didn't want to yeah. to take heed. And now that I'm older and a parent myself, mm -hmm. I, I really regret not learning how to do that. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, it's not too late. It's and never too we'll, late. We'll get it's to that. It's never too late. But that's good. Did you find that it was a struggle? Did your mom kind of have to force you to learn or did you want to learn? Um, I think I really wanted to learn. Okay. That's good. Um, I've had kind of a slight interest in modeling um, from a young age and me being tall, um, 5'11", it's 
everyone says, oh, you're going to be an athlete or, you know, a model or something like that. <laughs> and so I remember having um, catalogs or magazines and my mom and I'd be like, oh, that's so gorgeous, but it costs $5,000 or $10,000. <laughs> and my mom was like, you can make that. And it's, and that was like, what? I can make that? Wow. And she's like, yeah, you can make that. You can make whatever, you know, you can conceive basically. Um, and it won't cost anywhere near, you know, that amount. And so that's what really got me interested. Okay. So, so that, she didn't have that to was really... your motivation <laughs> yeah. to, to learn how to sew. Okay. Very good. Um, so now that you're on this journey of dress reform, mm -hmm. um, how is your knowledge of sewing clothes, making your own clothes? How has that helped you along your journey? Um, I think with understanding the technique of sewing, um, and fabrics, textiles. Um, it helps you to be able to look for quality okay. materials. Mm -hmm. um, I also, um, I'm able to go in and look at something on a shelf or on a rack and say, if it doesn't quite meet dress reform, is there a way to modify it? If I like it enough. Right. Um, and that's a big if, because sometimes altering uh, a garment is a lot more work than just making it. <laughs> really? That, yeah. I find that very interesting. I would think yeah. the opposite because at least you have something to work yeah. from, but... It depends on what you're altering and sure. what's there. Like, um, for example, um, I'm tall, and so if I wanted to uh, lengthen a skirt to make it modest mm -hmm. um, or conform to those standards, there'd have to be enough hem already on that garment to you know, mm -hmm. get the right length. Um, or I'd have to go get fabric from somewhere else yeah, and add it to block. the bottom. And yeah. then you, and depending on what that is, it might not look too good. It may not match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Understand. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so do you find that it's more affordable to make your own clothes? And I think you already answered that um, yeah. as opposed to just going to the store and, and buying. Absolutely. Um, it can definitely be a lot more affordable. Um, and I think I've found over the years, especially when um, I want to make something that's a little unique, um, because that's another thing that really motivated me is to not look like everyone yeah, else sure. um, or look like I got it from the same store. Um, you can really do that um, when you're making your own garments. And it's very similar to shopping, right? When you go to the store, a lot of people like myself like bargains. We go to the sale rack or the clearance rack and you can do that when you sew as well. They have um, fabric on the clearance shelf. Okay. So you can get some very quality materials um, that cost little of nothing wow. because maybe somebody didn't like the color or no one gravitated to it. So they have a whole bolt of fabric sitting there and you know, you can make an outfit for 10 bucks wow. for the cost of the material. I Amazing, $10, I just <laughs> <laughs> unimaginable. Yeah. I have to ask, do you do the majority of your sewing by hand or with a machine or do you do a combination of both? I use the machine. Okay. I really like the machine. And my mom would always joke that I'm making the machine smoke because <laughs> I like to tss, just yep. uh, put it on there and get it done. Um, but with that, it still requires a handwork, right? Yeah. You're, you have to iron and press seams. You have to prepare it so that when you get to the machine, you can do what you need to do. Right. So, you have to measure, right? Yeah, absolutely. Abs, ruler, <laughs> you need a ruler. Um, yeah. And so there's still a lot of prep work um, that goes into getting your garment ready to put it on the machine and to be successful at that. Sure. Yeah. Um, but that is definitely a steep learning curve um, because machines these days are so complex. Mm -hmm. You can get something very simple, but you can also get something with a lot of different stitches and a lot of different foots to do a lot of different designs. And so learning... Oh, that sounds confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. it, it can be. But, you know, really you can sew a garment with, you know, two feet, two presser feet and wow. a couple okay. stitches. And as we stitches. learned last week that our garments are supposed to be simple, right? Yeah. So we don't need to make the... You don't need all of that. <laughs> elaborate. <laughs>
clothing. So I understand that you have some pieces that you're going to share with us at this time yes. that you've actually made. Absolutely. I'm so excited. And I'm sure our viewers online are just as excited to see those pieces. So we are going to go ahead and uh, look at some of the pieces that Keisha has made. And while we're preparing to show you these visuals, let me just ask you, um, does it take very long? Generally, how long does it take to make a, a garment? I guess it would depend on what it is, right? Yeah, but, um, and it absolutely would. But, you know, for women, skirts are very simple. Okay. Very That's simple. That's good news, right, ladies yes. online? <laughs> you know, one or sometimes one panel um, for a skirt. Um, or two panels that you have to cut, so two seams or one seam, and mm -hmm. you have a skirt. Wow! Depending on the the style of the skirt. Okay. Yeah. So it can be extremely simple. So and even novices can make it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. That's good news. All right. So here we have one of the pieces that you have made. It is a gorgeous piece. Thank and can you. you tell us a little bit about this piece? Yes. So um, I made this for a semi-formal event that I went to. Um, Actually, this is one of my older pieces. Okay. Um, but it's a two-piece with a, I mean, three-piece with a skirt, a shirt, and um, this jacket, of course. And so we were talking about ways to be able to modify mm -hmm. clothing or um, adjust clothing to fit um, dress reform. And so, as you can see, the shirt is a tank, mm -hmm. but there's a jacket that can be worn over so that she is um, completely covered and not violating any health laws. That's right. Well. And the material is very good quality. It, yes. It's not, you know, cheap, <laughs> cheap Absolute, material. Absolutely. It's it was very, very nice. It and seems I think durable. And on sale too, so. Well, praise <laughs> God. Well, this is, this is very nice. This looks like something you would find at, at a department store mm -hmm. or something that you would find in the formal aisle. So yes. that's... Uh, very, very good. God has really given you a gift Thank in you. making garments. So we're going to move over to your rack here. Okay. You have two other pieces yes. here that you'd like to show us. And they're yes. also in the burgundy <laughs> color family. Yes, they are. My yes. mom jokes with me that I gravitate towards the burgundies and red. And okay. my college beautiful. colors were burgundy too, so I don't know how all that happened. But um, this is another piece um, that is made. It's a jacket with a, a long skirt. Um, and my, my mother has snaps here. My mother likes to do handwork. She prefers handwork over, um, sewing on the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. So most likely she's the one who did, um, these attachments here. Oh, these are very nice. I, I hope you guys can really see it's very intricate, but it's, it's lovely. Yes. It's very nice. So I can't remember where I wore that one to. This um, looks like another formal or a church, yes. perhaps. Um, most likely church okay. is where I ended up wearing it. It's very nice. Now this one is actually um, the senior year of high school. Um, this was my winter formal dress. Okay. And so there's a jacket here. And I just want to remind everyone I didn't grow up <laughs> Adventism. Mm -hmm. So um, this was the jacket here. And the skirt, as you can see, has a bit of a train here. And it's laced over some black fabric. Um, but again, a way to be able to modify this to make it fit dress reform is that you can easily um, remove this train, cut that off. Yeah, and so it's not have, dragging the so ground, So it's not right? dragging the yeah. ground, right. So this is very nice. This is, a, not too many high schoolers can say they actually made, <laughs> made their own dress, dresses. Yes, I made That's all my dresses for high school formal dances. Really? Yeah. Now, did you get help with mom or these are completely independent um, projects? Um, I'm sure mom helped. Like okay. she likes to close in scenes and yes. she likes to um, make like sure said, you did it right. I'm exactly. Sure. <laughs> go back and inspect and do quality control. Um, okay. So I'm sure she lent a, lent a hand. Now, okay, so now that you're standing here, we're talking about clothing that you've made. Oh. You actually made that skirt that you're wearing. Is that right? I, I did. I did. It so, is beautiful. Thank you so and much. For the winter weather, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a, a cotton. We're going to talk about fabrics a little yes. later, but this is a all cotton skirt, and I really like plaids. So oh, I, I love make plaids too. And and I was just before we went live, I was talking to Keisha, and I told her that 
I find it hard to find plaid like this because mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are too short. Yes. You know, I'm tall. I'm not 5'11", but right. I'm tall too, but a lot of them are, are short. But mm -hmm. it's a blessing to be able to make your own clothes. And Absolutely. So you can do it at home, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Very simple. I actually made this in a day. So. Wow. Once you, and That's it wasn't impressive. very, this is a very, well, besides the ruffle at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to talk about materials at this time. And so we're going to transition back to the couch and we are going to talk more about materials, okay. right? Because Absolutely. the materials that we wear are very important. Yes. As we're going to see in this study and future studies as well. All right, so I, I'm feeling inspired, and hopefully you all at home are feeling inspired, and hopefully after this presentation you're <laughs> seeing where you can find an inexpensive sewing machine mm. because you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you, right? Amen. And, and me too, a lot of people do ask me um, where I get my clothing, and they ask, do you make your own clothing? And I, I regrettably have to tell them, no, I don't, unfortunately, but I wish I did, but after this presentation... I really think I need to, you know, yes. invest some time in, into that. Absolutely. And teach my daughter as you grew up with, you know, your mother teaching, at the feet of your mother teaching yes. you, you know, it's a good skill to have to be able to pass on to our daughters. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to depend on these stores right. to, to make clothes for us. So Absolutely. Yes. So let's talk about fabrics. So do you have a particular preference as far as fabrics are concerned when you make your garments right um so i've gone through as we talked about a transition yes, sure. um, over the past year so i'm learning more and putting more um, energy into learning about what i'm putting on my body as well as putting in your body because as we know the skin is the largest organ and it does a lot of bodily functions for us um Absolutely exchange gas exchanges um secretions and and you know a absorption. number of things, absorption yeah. so um you don't realize it but um the processes that some of our fabrics go through they linger sometimes and that can actually impact your skin or they can be very irritating so now i use um natural fibers cottons linens wools. Um, I'm still kind of filling out some, what, are, what um, another sect of fabrics that are actually made from plant fibers, okay. but they still go through a lot of processing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that would be like your ray, uh, bamboos, mm. which I actually have some samples here while oh, I'm talking okay. about it. Um, so like this would be um, like 100% cotton. So this would have no stretch kind of between a canvas or a broadcloth. Mm -hmm. So um, it is very um, sturdy, probably on the lines of denim. Um, so Durable. it can go through a lot. So. Oh, yeah, very much so. Very so nice. that's 100 percent cotton. And okay. then we have um, I also brought just for example, some of the. Um, what they call synthetic fibers, which mm -hmm. are extremely popular. And they're popular because they're manufactured, right? They don't have to wait for something to grow and to harvest it like you have right. to do with cotton or flax, which is where you get your linen from. Um, so polyester is extremely popular, but this is, polyester is made from, um, is manufactured. So it comes from, uh, Petroleum, actually, products. So it's like wearing plastic wow. in, a, in a sense. And, and as so, you said, your skin absorbs exactly. all of these things. We have pores. Ellen yes. White calls them tiny little mouths in our skin, right? So <laughs> yes. It's just taking it, taking it all in. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, especially even for the under underclothes, yeah, undergarments to be Most, of the natural ab Absolutely, fibers. absolutely. And so, um, but people like them. Um, women like them because they do have um, some properties that um, natural fibers don't always have, like being extremely moisture wicking. Um, um, and because they're plastic, they tend to also hold their shape very well. And that's one of the biggest um, complaints about cotton or linen or wool is 
people are like, I don't want to iron my clothes. Or as soon as, like with linen, as soon as you iron it, you sit down and you get up and it's, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you have wrinkles for the yeah. rest of the day. And yeah. a lot of people don't like that. Um, but that group of uh, fabrics that I was talking about yes. that come from like wood pulp, but they're highly processed, they're called regenerated fabrics. And so um, that would be things like your lyocell, um, the base is wood pulp. So it's technically natural, mm -hmm. but it does go through a lot of processing. Okay. Um, and rayon, rayon is extremely popular, but um, same process, mm -hmm. you know, highly processed to get fabrics that are smooth and uh, don't wrinkle, wrinkle free. Very, yes, right. absolutely. <laughs> or what um, do they call them? Um, no wrinkle or something. Yes to that effect. Absolutely, you can just throw it in the bag and take it out and put it on and you're good to go. Um, can't do that with natural fibers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and then the last one just mm -hmm. are some samples of bamboo. Bamboo is, um, has become really popular here lately, mostly because of the sustainability of it, mm -hmm. um, because bamboo grows so fast and so you can chop it down. You can use the wood fiber or the bamboo fibers, the grass. Can I feel that? Absolutely. Oh. oh, it's very light. Yes. This looks like a material you could probably wear in the summertime. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's breathable as very, well as it's very. natural. That's okay. the thing about breathable fabrics. And it's interesting. This company also does like uh, performance bamboos. Oh, wow. You know, very nice or kind of velvet like bamboos. And I was like, what velvet? <laughs> velvet. <laughs> wow. So um, so there's a lot of options out there. Um, but again, it's important for us to do our research mm -hmm. and also to um, study and let our body speak to ours to us, um, because there might be some fabrics that are good for someone else. But then you mm -hmm. put them on and they might not. Um, work agree. well with you. Right. So it's a good to assess if like um, you're being irritated by a certain fabric, even a natural fabric. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It could be the fabric or maybe it's um, the processing. And so they have, they do have some standards out there where you can see if it passes certain contamination type standards okay. um, for the fabrics. Yeah, that's very interesting. And a lot of, uh, a principle that sometimes we overlook is the fact that Dress reform is a part of health reform, yes. you know, um, as it relates to the fabric, but also the extremities being covered. That's another component. And we have to view it as, as it relates to the fabric as, you know, our food. Right. The less processed, yes. the better. The more natural, the better, right? Yes. Because the more processing it goes through, um, it does affect us. Mm -hmm. It does affect our health. Absolutely. And so. All right, we could spend a whole presentation yes. just talking about this, but we have other important <laughs> questions to get to, and um, which uh, this brings me to another question. Do you have a particular piece that you've made that is very, very meaningful or special to you? What is that piece, and why is it so special to you? Okay, I do. I brought it with me, actually. Oh, so okay, we can... so we have another visual, mm -hmm. so we'll prepare to show you all. Um, this special piece. So while we're getting that ready, can you just tell us why um, this piece is so special? Absolutely. So um, I used to, even though I don't really like being in front of the camera, I was always kind of forced to be in front of the camera. And so I used to do um, speaking kind of competitions where I would uh, do monologues um, for or, or perf monologue performances. Okay. And so I really love period pieces, okay. um, old English type, along Got the it. lines of Shakespeare and all of that. So and they're covered, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, my mom and I actually made this piece together oh. for a competition that I was in. Okay. So we're going to look at that piece right now. I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited for our viewers at home to see it as well. So, um, yes, this is the piece that my mother and I made. And wow. it was 
a lot of work, probably one of the more challenging pieces okay. that we've done together. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we even look back now like, wow, we did all that? And you, were you in high school at the time? I was in high school. Wow. And um, really so I wore this as um, for my monologue that I delivered um, for that competition. And so it's really special to me because one, it's one of the more challenging pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and I got so many compliments on it and people thought I had purchased it. Wow. Um, for and that. you viewers at home may not know that, but this isn't a shirt underneath a dress. This is all one piece. Yes. This is all sewed together, even the piece in the middle here. Mm -hmm. And it's very strong fabric as well here. Yes. So how long do you think this took you to? Oh, man, this took a, <laughs> this took a long time. OK. Would you say months? Uh, I'd probably say about a month. OK. Um, with the detail for the the sleeves, the sleeves and the gatherings. And I had to learn how to do grommets okay. here. And it was it was a lot. It's, wow. it's a, and it's a lot of fabric, too. So I when can you see start, why it's meaningful. And the yeah. fact that you and your mom, you know, I'm sure it was a bonding experience Absolutely. for you both as you made this garment. And Absolutely. so. All right, so what, do you have any advice for people that may have never touched a sewing machine in their life, have not one ounce of experience, yes. but they're seeing this presentation, they say, wow, I really, really wish that I could sew my own clothes. Yes, I would say just start, but I did bring um, a piece to kind of show you all um, how you can get started, a practical way, right? We know that uh, Christianity is intensely practical, and so we want to um, make this as easy as possible for you. Um, and so this piece right here is actually what we would call a prototype, a prototype okay. piece. So it's made out of muslin. Muslin is a very inexpensive cotton fabric, okay. right? So it's all natural. But what they use um, in the design and sewing industry muslin for is to make the first piece, right? You can test your pattern with it. So if you're getting started and you don't want to spend a lot of money on some really nice fabric and you think you're going to mess it up and you don't know what stitch to use or how to finish it or don't, can't read the pattern, a good way to start is with cotton, okay. cotton muslin. And so as you can see, it has... Um, blue marks on here, which is marking the fabric up so that you know where to sew or stitch or add the pieces together. But this is a very somewhat simple dress. Um, the collar here is supposed to have buttons, mm -hmm. which you would put here. But these are all techniques that um, you can learn and practice on something. And then also one thing once you'll learn is to make your stitches really wide so you can easily rip them out. Because okay. you'll have to do that <laughs> often. Um, but this is a very practical way to get started. Buy a pattern. Um, like I said earlier, skirts are pretty simple. Usually mm -hmm. two pieces, a front piece and a back piece, and two seams on the side. And then some way to um, some type of banding, like okay. a drawstring mm -hmm. or a zipper. So I would say buy a skirt pattern, get you some cotton muslin, get you a simple sewing machine, and you will be sewing in no time. Wow, that's pretty inspiring. So how many of you online are going to take the challenge to get a simple pattern and to learn how to, how to start, or to at least begin the process, right? So put it in the chat. Hopefully you all will begin this journey that I plan on beginning myself as well. All right, so we have a few more uh, questions we want to ask Sister Keisha before mm -hmm. we close out at this time. And thank you for showing these pieces. They're, they're all so lovely and beautiful. You're quite welcome. Yes. I'm happy to do so. I'm glad. I've been holding on to them for a while, some <laughs> of them. So I'm glad that they've come in handy yes. <laughs> for God's for glory. So um, yes, I pray this has been a blessing for everyone. Amen. So you have meant to mentioned that sometime making your own clothes sometime is easier than altering your yes. clothes. Mm -hmm. So you obviously make your clothes for yourself. Mm -hmm. Have you ever made anything for anyone else? I have not, um, unfortunately. It is something that I wanted to do. Um, I actually, at one time, really wanted to apprentice a tailor. Okay. Because uh, as you all may know, tailors work um, usually with men's clothing. Um, but men's clothing tends to be more structured, 
think of the jackets and the collars, even um, your own dress, the collar mm -hmm. and um, the seams here. It's usually a, a bit more technical. And so I really wanted to spend some time learning their tips and tricks I see. and techniques um, so that I could feel more confident mm -hmm. in um, sewing for others because it is a different, it's a whole different ball game really it is. because you know, I know my body, I know my shape, and we're all built differently mm -hmm. and endowed differently. Um, so those are considerations that I go into when I pick a pattern, sure. um, when I pick fabric. Or, and, and so I can easily just kind of fall in and say, oh, this will work or this won't work or I need more here or there. Um, but with someone else, it's a little different. And then sure. also their likes and dislikes, mm -hmm. right? Their preferences. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Understand. So has your knowledge of... Uh, sewing, mm -hmm. has that helped you to be able to witness to others? I know you shared your story on your job. Mm -hmm. Are there any other instances where um, your knowledge of sewing has opened up a witnessing uh, opportunity for mm -hmm. you? Um, yes, I think there have been a few times where someone has um, maybe complimented maybe an outfit that I had on mm -hmm. um, and I was able to you know, tell them that it was, you know, it's easy. You can make this, Praise you God. know, you can do it too. Um, and it's also, um, of course, we get comments or questions about why do we wear long skirts all the time mm -hmm. or why do we do these things? And so that's also a, a lead into um, fabrics and materials and health and all mm -hmm. the things that we've talked about today, yes. right? Yeah. And depending on where they are, so. It does happen. Okay. Well, my closing question for you mm -hmm. is, do you have any closing words for those online? Um, I just want to encourage all of you um, to continue in this journey, to continue in this walk. Um, of course, it's not easy, and there are some things that are a bit more challenging than others. Uh, for me, one of those challenges was sports attire. Mm -hmm. What do I do when I go to the gym? Mm -hmm. um, how do I make these, reconcile these two things? We're going to deal with that yeah. in upcoming <laughs> series, so keep watching. Right. <laughs> yes, go and ahead. And so, and I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Amen. Um, but what I found personally is that there is such a freedom in um, obeying God's law. Amen. And I don't think that many people talk about it that much. We often talk about how hard it is or how challenging it is. But we don't talk about the freedom that comes with it. And I found so much freedom in um, dress reform. It limits, you know, when you go into the store, there's whole sections you just avoid, right? right? Because you know they're not gonna have anything for you. And so it makes shopping easier spend less money right. because half the things in that store you can't wear, don't conform. Um, and it's so freeing to not have those pressures or challenging um, or challenges. Right. And it's also um, has really allowed me to feel more co confident and comfortable, especially having conversations with people about the word of God mm -hmm. um, because you don't feel like there's uh, a divide, like there's, um, I guess, a word would be like hypocrisy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are you telling me this about the Bible when I know the verse that says women should be modest mm -hmm. or this and you're dressed like that, right? So it really opens up and I found that people are more engaged and willing to talk to me being dressed modestly right. as opposed to um, how I used to dress um, before coming into this. And you, you can attest that you get more positive attention than unwanted Absolutely. attention. Absolutely. Because you don't want people gawking at you or talking to you for nefarious reasons Absolutely. because they're looking at certain parts of your body. But if you're covered, you know, <laughs> you know yes. that door is closed. Yes, right? ab absolutely. And on the flip side, um, when you understand how important it is for us women to um, protect um, men and the men that we engage with those of that we know and even those strangers. Mm -hmm. We don't know what um, they're going through or what their struggles are. 
and right. we don't want to cause them to stumble. So when you realize and take responsibility that, and realize that we have a responsibility to obey God's law and that there's a reason, right? He doesn't just tell us not to do things because he's a mean God and doesn't want us to have fun. But there's a reason and a purpose behind it. And it's for our own benefit. It's our own, for our benefit. He wants us to be saved and he wants all of us to be with him um, when he returns. And so when you kind of switch your view of it, I think that it's not a burden, right? We know that um, Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Um, this has been a light burden. It's been challenging sometimes figuring mm -hmm. out how to make it work, but... I would say, I hope that you all are encouraged from this and realize that you can make your own garments. Um, you can do it affordably. And even, you know, think about partnering with people. Um, Pastor Enrique always talks about people coming together, right? Someone might have a sewing machine. Someone else might have a lot of fabric. Um, someone might want to learn how to sew and be willing to, uh, to um, study uh, sew from someone else and someone might have money, right? Mm -hmm. Might be willing to fund someone who knows how to sew or has a desire to learn how to sew. And then you repay them with providing garments for them. There's a lot of different ways that you can uh, make this work for yourself, for others, to God's glory. Amen. And as we started out with the virtuous woman, we'll, we'll close that way, that God does value us far above rubies. And when you think about the ruby or all of the precious stones and gems that the Lord has created. They're hard to find because yes. they're buried under the earth. God values us and he wants us as women and men to, but we're specifically talking about women, right? Mm -hmm. To value ourselves enough to cover ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And to save yourself for, for your husband, right? And so yeah, God sure. values us. So why don't we place a high estimate, a high value on ourselves and, and cover ourselves as God would have us to do. And so I just want to say, Keisha, this has been a tremendous blessing having you here. And it's so refreshing to find a young person, a babe in the faith, as it were, um, that is living dress reform, that is making clothing for herself, that complies with dress reform. You know, there's so many fashion designers out here that yes. are designing clothes that are immodest, that are unhealthy, that are just, yes. <laughs> you know, Ridiculous fashions, yes. right? Worldly fashions, but it's a blessing to know that there are people, there are virtuous women out here working willingly with their hands, and many of them are willing to, as, as she just said, share their knowledge and their experience uh, with others that don't know. And so yes. thank you for being here. Thank we you. Certainly, uh, you certainly have inspired me, and I think you've inspired all of our viewers um, mm. that tuned in with us tonight. And by God's grace, we will see you next week for another special presentation. Until then, God bless.